Hey everybody, welcome back to another video in the Star Rod Mapping series. Today I'm going to go over a little bit more of a complex trick, but one that is, is simple in practice once you get the hang of it. And it's going to be very, very handy in certain situations for making complex geometry. Um, so, let's say for example, you have this floor here. So I have this floor and I want to make a hole in it. Well, I would have to rearrange all these triangles uh, until I make the, the shape of the hole that I want and then I have to piece it all together. It would be super complex. It would be a big mess. I'd have to delete all this and just like manually make the triangles again if I did it that way. But there's a much easier way to do it and it's very simple if you're, f if you're familiar with Blender and um, other 3D softwares potentially, but Blender particularly has uh, a boolean modifier. And essentially what that does in Blender is it will let you take a model, uh, any model that you have, put it inside another model and it will cut a hole with that using that model as a sh uh, as the cutter basically. So if you put a sphere into a cube it would cut out a, a sphere shape hole into that cube. And you can kind of do something similar with Star Rod. It's not exactly a boolean cut, but um, it's it's close enough to get the job done in a lot of cases. So let's uh, let's try it out. So I'm going to make a hole here. So right in the spot. And what I'm, first I'm going to do is I'm going to create the shape of the hole. What I want the hole to look like, and I can just do that by making a cylinder. You can also use other things. You can use a radial sphere, but I'm going to use a cylinder because I also want a wall for the hole. So I'm going to go to the create section, top right. I'm going to go to new primitive. I'm going to make my cylinder. I'm going to just make it the default settings, but you can make it whatever you want. I'm going to move it down. Okay. And now I'm just going to play around with the vertices a bit until I'm satisfied with the shape of the hole I want. play around as, as much as you want until you get something that you like. I think that's good enough. Okay, so this is obviously it's not a hole yet because you can still see this floor inside of it. Now we're going to change that. So I'm just going to isolate this part of the floor to make it easier. So I'm going to select these triangles around where I want the hole to be and I'm going to split the model. Okay, now I'm going to take my cylinder and I'm also going to take all the model around it and I'm going to go to create. This time I'm going to do from geometry or from triangles for using a version pass version 3 and I want to change it to projection. And you want to make sure that you're doing it on the right axis. So since it's top down, we want to do it from the Y axis. Okay, and now I'm going to generate this. And what it's going to do is it's going to generate the exact same shape of the floor, but it's also going to take into account the other model. So I'm going to move it down, move it a little bit, and you might get a few triangles that uh, you don't want. Just easily delete them. Um, just like that, I just had one there. Actually, I might have another here. Sometimes this happens. It's just like it's a quirk of the generation. Just make sure that you don't have any uh, stray triangles that were generated. Okay, this looks fine. So and now you'll see if I um, I'll hide this for the time being. You'll see that it's generated all these triangles here where that cylinder was. And what you can do is you can just pick all of these triangles in your cylinder, in the shape of your cylinder, and then just press delete. And I will take this old uh, part of the floor that I had and I'll delete this too. And now I can move the cylinder down until it's level with the floor. Just so you can see it better, I'll, I'll fix the UV paint here as well, quickly. And just like that, now you have a hole in your floor, and it only took just 
basically a minute. It's not perfectly level, but there we go. Yeah, it's super easy. And you can do this uh, with walls as well. So uh, the only downside with this is you're going to have to fix your... You might, uh, if you've already UV painted your floor, uh, you, you probably want to make sure that you do this before that, but if, you, if, if you've already, unfortunately, UV painted it, you're probably going to have to uh, fix those, those uh, or sorry, vertice, uh, vertice painting. If, you, if you've already painted the vertices of your model, you might have to redo that because it's going to completely change the geometry, your new generation. And then you, you're also going to have to fix your UVs. Just going to quickly do it. This is not going to be perfect, but good enough for now. Okay, just put something else here. All right, and then you can, like I said, you can do walls as well. So I'm just going to create a, uh, a new primitive here. Make another planar grid. I'm going to rotate it along this, along this uh, viewport. Okay, so it's just two triangles at the moment, but let's say. So I'm going to fit this perfectly to one of the grid spaces here. So move this up. All right, I got a perfect square. And you can also move the 3D cursor with the mouse button, middle mouse button, just so your, your 3D cursor is where your generated model is going to be. So let's create another cylinder. Basically, I want to make the cylinder a part of this model, so it's actually imposed in the model. So again, I'm just going to move uh, these vertices down, okay, and let's just adjust it a little bit, okay, that's good. So right now, it's not, these are two separate models and it's not uh, perfectly inside of it. Again, you just select both. Create from geometry, change uh, the projection axis so this time it's on the z-axis, and just like that, now you have your wall with the adjusted triangles. So you see all the the shape of the the cylinder that you had is going to be a part of this model now, and you can easily just go into the vertice mode here, just pick these vertices in the middle and just move them however you want or whatever reason that you're doing this for. You can also use it for baked lighting. So like, so you see, I just made a bump in the, a bump in the wall here. But you can also use it for baked lighting. I know the original uses a lot of baked lighting like that where all the lighting is essentially part of the geometry like this. So if you go to vertice painting, you can have much more precise colors in part of the model that you want. Opposed to like just a two, like a one by one planar grid wall where you can only color the triangles and it will, it will basically color the entire triangle across. And you can do this for basically any shape you want. So any complex shape that you want to impose into a model. Again, you just select both models and you, uh, you project another one on the correct axis and it will create it for you. And you can do it, like I'll, I'll give you one more example. So, let's make a torus. So this is a, a much more complex one. And say I want it would it would take a long time to manually uh, make this torus shape in the actual model if you wanted to do that. But you can do it very easily by just again from geometry or from triangles, creating a projection, and voila. You have a model and you can do it whatever you want with it, so you can you can cut these out if you want. Just like that. Perfect. Got a nice hole in the wall. 
All right, that's Boolean cutting in Star Rod, or uh, at least as, as good as it can get in that in that aspect. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys hope you found this useful. Hope you enjoyed, and if you did, leave a like, subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks. Bye.